who races impossible against all odds in 10 minutes. This is BBC One. Now a budget broadcast by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kenneth Clark. Ever since I became Chancellor, I've tried to get out and about to keep in touch with what's happening in the economy. I meet businessmen, pensioners, people with families, particularly in the industrial Midlands where I come from. And I listen closely to what you have to say. I know that many of you are yet to be convinced that the economic situation is getting much better. You want to see real improvements in your living standards and be assured that your jobs are secure. I understand that. That's what my budget today is all about. Achieving lasting economic growth that will lead to higher living standards and more jobs. There's no doubt that the economic situation is getting better, and it's getting better more quickly than anybody thought this time last year. In fact, our national output now stands at an all-time high. We can all remember the heady peaks of the late 1980s and also the damage done by the long recession. But the economy began picking up over two years ago, first very slowly, then gradually, and now more strongly. At the start of this year, we passed our previous peak, producing even more than at the height of the boom. But instead of falling off, the economy has gone on from strength to strength. In time, steady growth will mean higher living standards for more and more people. But you don't do that by gimmicks. We've got to stick to the course we're on, to work for those higher living standards. I want to make sure this recovery lasts. We don't want another short-run consumer boom that ends in tears. We want well-balanced growth, and that's just what we're seeing. Exports are doing best of all. We now sell cars to Germany, perfume to France, and even television sets to Japan. In the past, recoveries in Britain led to balance of payments problems. This time, thanks to the success of British exporters, the balance of payments is improving. One thing I have to do to make sure the recovery lasts is to control inflation. Over the years, prices here have tended to go up faster than in the countries we compete with. Every time that's happened, we lost business and we lost jobs. And at home, Everybody's savings were wiped out, and the worst hit were the pensioners. Now inflation's low. In fact, inflation's been below 3% for over a year now. The last time that happened was in the 1960s, when I was a young parliamentary candidate. 20% pay increases in the 1970s may have felt good at the time, but they were soon wiped out by even higher price rises. Now we're back to levels of inflation not seen since England won the World Cup. High inflation killed off previous recoveries. Now that we've got it down again, I'm determined to make sure that it doesn't come back to finish this one. The other thing the government has to do is to get public finances in order. Any family that goes through a troubled period and gets into debt knows about this sort of process. This time last year, after the recession, we were facing the risk of a government borrowing requirement of nearly £50 billion. Pounds. Everybody knew that couldn't go on. So I took action to get a grip on the problem in my last budget by taking £15 billion out of public spending. And I had to raise some taxes last year, including some very unpopular ones. We have to stick to that course. I know it's not instantly popular, but beware of politicians who go for easy-sounding, instant popularity. Keeping borrowing down is a key part of keeping your interest rates down. Healthy public finances are a key part of protecting your job and looking after your future prosperity. So I've cut borrowing again this year, not by raising any more taxes, but by taking another £28 billion off public spending. And I've been especially tough on the overhead cost of running Whitehall and the government itself. As a result, I've been able to make some changes which will help us all. The main income tax allowances have been increased fully in line with inflation. I've also been able to widen the 20 pence income tax ban by twice the rate of inflation. Do you know that one in five of all taxpayers will now only pay tax at the lowest 20p rate? For families, there's more spending on the services they use most, health service and education and the police service. There's extra help for grandparents too. As I promised last year, pensions have been raised to help with VAT on fuel and power. By next April, a single pensioner will have an extra £52 a year and a couple an extra £73 a year 
put into everybody's pension on top of the normal pension increase. I've also increased the age-related tax allowance by more than inflation to a cut tax a little for nearly 3 million pensioners. Everybody will be pleased that I haven't put up tax on alcohol at all. That's because our brewers and our Scotch whiskey industry have been hit by too much smuggling from the continent. I've done a lot more to help businesses. That's got to be my priority. But one of the main aims of my budget today has been to do more to help people get back into the new jobs that are being created. Unemployment's coming down, and coming down sooner and faster than anybody expected. It's still rising in most of the rest of Europe. Do you know that over the past 12 months, unemployment went up by 7% in Germany? It rose in Italy, in Spain, and in France, but it's fallen by over 10% here in Britain. British firms are becoming ever more competitive, and they're succeeding in winning world markets, and they're creating new jobs as a result. But I've also taken new steps to help unemployed people get back into those jobs, particularly people who've been out of work for some time. I'm encouraging employers to give the unemployed a chance by cutting the cost to the employer of employing people at lower incomes. That must make more sense than making it more expensive to create new jobs for the minimum wage or the social chapter. I intend to go further in the future by raising a new tax on industrial waste to pay for bigger cuts in the tax on jobs. It will be practical help for unemployed people themselves, help with buying new tools or new clothes, help to get in-work benefits sorted out more quickly, an extra family credit for people with children who are working full-time. For already succeeding in getting unemployment down, these measures will help get it down further that ensure that those people who might have given up hope of a job are able to share the benefits of economic recovery with the rest of us. We have a lot to look forward to in this country. The prospects of the British economy are the best we've seen for a generation. No wonder new businesses are being created all the time here. There are almost a third more businesses now than 15 years ago. And you don't have to take the word of a British politician that Britain's the best place in Europe to do business. That's the verdict of Japanese and American businessmen who choose to invest here rather than elsewhere in Europe. Our Sony making hi-fis in South Wales, or Honda making cars in Swindon, or most recently the Korean firm Samsung who will be creating 3,000 jobs in the Northeast making computers. They're joining our own British investors and investors from all over Europe in increasing our manufacturing investment as our manufacturing production rises. I want to build on those strengths. My budget today will help us achieve higher living standards for people in work, more jobs for people out of work, and extra opportunities for our young people leaving school, college, or university. My message isn't such a tough one this year. My message is one of sensible optimism and determination to achieve success and better times. 1994 has been a year of healthy growth. We stick to our course. 1995 can be a better year with the steadily emerging hope of many good years to come. Good night. That budget broadcast by the Chancellor of the Exchequer will be shown again with subtitles on BBC Two at 10.30. On BBC...